The objective of this video is to retrieve a list of all the users in the chat room and then retrieve the locations of the GPS coordinates of those users. So if I was to navigate to one of the chat rooms, uh, there's a bunch of users in here and you can go to the users list and uh, you can see which users. So we need to retrieve the GPS coordinates. So if I go to Firestore and I go to the database to Firestore, you can see that the users collection uh, contains all of the GPS coordinates of the users. Right now there's just one here, but uh, normally there would be a list of every user who's ever logged into the application. So we need to go to the chat room, go to the users list, retrieve the list of users, and then retrieve the GPS coordinates of each of those users. That's the goal of this video. So what I wanna do is inside chat room activity, we can retrieve a list of all the user locations. So if you remember our user location object, holds an object and a geo point. So we'll make a list of user location objects. And then when user list fragment comes into view, which is this fragment. So if I click on the user list, this is user list fragment that comes into view. When that comes into view, um, we can attach the uh, user list to the bundle, just like, uh, actually there's nothing to attach to the bundle right now. Oh yeah, right here. So just like uh, I'm attaching a, a user list to the bundle, we'll attach a list of user location objects. Same sort of thing, that way they're all in the fragment. So the first step of the process is to create a list of user locations. Now we need to do two things. We need to build a method responsible for actually retrieving the user locations, and we need to figure out a spot to call that method. Uh, if we scroll down to the get chatroom users method, this is kind of the ideal place that we'd want to call the method because in here, uh, we're already retrieving a list of all the users. So you can see that right here, uh, this loop right here, it's looping through all of the users in the chat room and then it's adding them to the users list. So what if ideally, if we could call a method, say, um, get user locations and it, it's accepted the user object here, that would be ideal because we, we would already be, we'd already have that user object and then we could just retrieve that user's information and add it to the user locations list. So for now, um, actually, I can just, uh, I'm gonna press Alt Enter, Alt Enter, and go create method, get user locations. So it's a private method, actually, oops, I don't want it in that context. I want it outside here, uh, get user locations. And this is where we're gonna, this is where we're gonna um, retrieve the geo points basically for each user. But let's actually call this get user location, not get user locations, because technically this is being called on each individual user. So you're only getting uh, a single location. Okay, so we'll start by getting a document reference. I'll call it uh, location ref, mdb.collection, and we want to reference the, uh, whoops, get string, r.string. We want to reference the user locations collection, and the document is uh, the user ID. It's identified by the user ID, so get user ID. And then locations ref dot get, we wanna add on complete listener, new on complete listener, add a semicolon there. And if the task is successful, we know we were able to retrieve a result. So let's see. And then if the result, so if task dot get result uh, dot to object user location dot class, uh, does not equal null. So if there is actually actually a GPS coordinate in the database for that user, which it should have, no matter what, the user shouldn't be able to use the application unless they've allowed GPS to work and actually insert into the database. So theoretically, this should be impossible, but you never know. Uh, so then we want to add that location. So task, get result to object, just like that. Okay. So that should give us a list of all the user locations for every user in the chat room. Now we need to pass those, uh, those locations to the fragment. So right here, uh, we need to attach it to a bundle. So put parsable array list and then get string r.string dot um, intent user locations. Obviously I've added these strings ahead of time. So if you're confused about that. And here we're gonna get an error because I didn't implement parsable in the user location object. So we need to do that. So I'm gonna open up this, go implements parcelable, whoops, parcelable, which 
basically is just a way to package objects into a bundle. If you create a custom object class, you need to make it parsable if you want to attach it to a bundle. So all I've did is, uh, I'll, I'll do it again. I did a little fast there actually. Let's delete this. So all I did was uh, I'm pressing Alt Enter, add parsable implementation, clicking that, and that's it. We're done. So now this is parsable. That's uh, that that red that warning goes away, and now those that list of objects is going to get sent to the fragment. So the other end of that transaction is actually in the fragment itself. So I'm going to open up user list fragment, and I'm going to create a list of user location objects. User location. So there's the new array list, and then inside the onCreate method we're gonna retrieve that list of objects. So just like I've done here with this, this uh, user list, uh, we can do the same thing with the user locations. So m user locations equals get arguments, get parsable array list extra, get string, uh, and then uh, r.string.intent user locations. And that's it. So that'll give us a list of all the user users, user locations who are in the chat room. So just to kind of show you that it's working, uh, I'm going to go down into on create view and then we're going to print, we're going to loop through all the user location objects uh, and show that they're able to retrieve them. So user location and user locations and just print it to the log. I'll uh, we'll just do, whoops, user location, maybe just get user, uh, get user. In, uh, I guess we should probably print the geo point just to show. No, get user is fine. Get user, or I'll do both. Get username, and then we'll do uh, geo point. Get geo point, and then uh, I don't know if I can use two string on a geo point, so I'll just do uh, get latitude, and then maybe comma uh, user location. Get geo point. Get longitude. Why is that giving me? Oh, there we go. Oh, there's comma there. Okay, so we have uh, the latitude and then the comma the longitude, and that'll kind of just make sure that everything's working. So I'm going to run that, and let's take a look at Firestore and look in the chat room. So if I look in this, this is the only chat room. Uh, there should be three users in the list, and ah, uh, see, but we're gonna run into a problem here because I, I initially added those users to the chat room before I implemented the functionality where they had to have their user location. So that's gonna cause a problem. So I'm going to actually delete the user list. And so I'm going to run it first on one app, one phone. So that's on this phone. Um, I'm gonna join the chat room by clicking here. So if I refresh this, <clears throat> and I go to the chat room, it should be one user, which is the one I just joined on. Okay, so now I'm gonna run it on another phone and I'm gonna log in with a different user and I'm also gonna join the chat room. So one of the other accounts is MitchTabian at live.com. The password is also password, whoops, I spelled the password wrong. Password, so I'm logged in now. Uh, so if I now, if I go back to the database here, I go to user locations, we see two users. So we have the one that I just logged in with, Mitch, Mitch uh, Tabian at live.com. There's currently no avatar, just, I could actually set it really quick, so I'll, uh, this is the phone. So if I go to the profile, I can change the avatar to something. Uh, go back, and you can see that the avatar was updated. Uh, so that's fine. That doesn't really. I, I just wanted to do that. There's no reason I needed to do that right now. Uh, now let's go to the chat rooms. Go to the user list. You can see there's currently one. So if I open the app, is that the right one? Yeah, that was the right one. So this is the Mitch Tabian at live.com. I'm going to join the chat room. You can see there I was just added to the chat room list. So now there's two uh, users added to this list. I just said hi. Okay, so now if I go to the user list here, it should retrieve the GPS coordinates and print it to the log. So I'm going to open up Android Studio. I'm going to open the log, switch it to that phone. click on the user list. Let's take a look here. So uh, yeah, so on create view, we have the first user, Mitch, his latitude and longitude, 
then on, and then Mitch Tabian and his latitude and longitude. I'm not sure why it's calling it twice. You can see it's definitely calling it twice because there, there's the first run and there's the second run. But you, either way, you can clearly see that it is able to retrieve those coordinates. So everything is working as we expect at this point. So right now, when I open this fragment, it doesn't really do anything. It doesn't uh, put any markers. It's just showing my location. Uh, it doesn't do anything, doesn't zoom, doesn't change the camera. So uh, the next part is actually I want to be able to set the camera view to the to kind of surround the region that all the people in the chat room are on or or maybe even just the region that the authenticated user is looking at. So that's what we're going to look at in the next video.